This joins similar offerings from both Google and Amazon. Al Jazeera's Gerald Tan has more details. Something on my First came the iPod, followed by the iPhone and then the iPad. Now the umbrella tool to service them all, the iCloud. Apple CEO Steve Jobs briefly returned to work from medical leave to unveil his newest baby, a remote online data storage and sharing service for the Apple platform. A lot of us have been working for 10 years to get rid of the file system so the user didn't have to worry about it. But the piece that we weren't finished with was how do we move those documents around to different devices. And documents in the cloud solves that problem for us. The iCloud lets users synchronize files across every Apple device they own and keep a full backup of that data online. Music, photos and documents typically live in computer hard drives or other physical media such as CDs and memory sticks. With cloud computing, those files are kept in a secure part of the internet. Consumers would be able to download their digital library from practically anywhere, potentially eliminating the need for hard drives altogether. The technology certainly isn't new. Google and Amazon offer similar services, but Apple says the iCloud goes a step further. Say I've just purchased a new song on iTunes using this laptop. In order to listen to the music on the go, I currently have to transfer it from this MacBook to the iPad and the iPhone. With the iCloud's automatic sync function, that's all a thing of the past. No more wires or clunky disks, but worldwide access at a button's click. A convenience that's also raising some eyebrows. I'm very concerned actually about iCloud and how we control intellectual property from inadvertently ending up in iCloud. With the launch of iCloud, Apple is hoping to lock in more customers, as users of the new service would be more likely to buy future generations of Apple products, guaranteeing the company's cloud cover for years to come. Gerald Tan, Al Jazeera.